Once inside the common room, Harry was greeted by the cheers of his fellow Gryffindors. Harry and Ron became Gryffindor heroes due to their little accident with the Whomping Willow. Harry slept well that night and looked forward to his first day at Hogwarts. Good morning, Harry! It's time for our Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson with Professor Lockhart. I just love his books. He's such a brilliant writer. Do you ever smile? On the third floor. Follow us. Nah, hang on a second. Oh, I've got all kinds of things I can be collecting. I'll just increase this a bit, and I'll definitely want to invert the vertical control for when I'm on a broom. Everything else seems okay, though. Flipendo! What the hell good did that do? What's the point? At least this time they stand around waiting for you so you don't lose them. Does she do anything if I jump on her? Nope. What is the floor made of ice? Wow, Harry? impressive. How the fuck did you get up there? Here. Try to hurry, Harry. We'll get to see Gilderoy Lockhart in person. Don't intentionally outrun me and then say, "Try to hurry, you fuck lord." Oh my god. Hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Nick. Even after all these years, I still find new secrets in Hogwarts. Here's a special area that you can unlock only if you collect all 40 silver wizard cards. For every 10 silver wizard cards you collect, you'll get a key that will allow you to open one of the four locks on the door. I'm pretty sure I could climb and crawl through it after using one key, though. Throughout Hogwarts and the grounds. You know, cast, I don't know what it is, but casting spells feel so much better in this game, too. Just nice, fluid motions rather than stiff, stepper motor type of arm movements. I think I even like how the staircases move in this game better than the third game. Well, how the fuck do I reach that? Actually, if is there a rule against flying a broomstick inside the castle? Eh, probably. Remember where it is, don't you? Wow, nice job, fucker. I'd better get out of here. Filch might be lurking nearby. But they don't stand there. Well, well, well. I heard a crash, and what do I find? Mr. Harry Potter. Ron, are you gonna help me out here? I can see you watching from a safe distance. Argus Filch, the caretaker, was loathed by every student at Hogwarts. Some thought his cat, Mrs. Norris, spied on students. Honestly, it, it just fell. Come, come to me. Let me rip you. What was that? Hey, what are you talking about? I heard a voice. Hearing voices won't get you off. I'll mark this down against you. Now move along while I clean this up. I must have been hearing things. Actually, what happens if I go back and bother him some more? I just have to know. Jumping does nothing. For some reason, knocking over a cauldron doesn't bother him either. Back to break more valuable school property. I said move along. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, wait. Cool, Let's see what this is. Yep. That was fantastic. 
Welcome to Defense Against the Dark Arts. My fame makes an introduction unnecessary, but I'll delight you with one anyway. What a car. I'm Gilderoy Lockhart, Order of Merlin, third class. Honorary member of the Dark Force Defense League, and five-time winner of Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. Ah, I see you've all bought a complete set of my books. Well done. Today, Speaking of those books, those sets are practically the half the size of the students themselves. I'm not even kidding, look. Stunning certain pesky creatures such as Cornish pixies. Who wants to be first? Harry Potter, will you step down here, please? Lucky. Well, we'll see how lucky I really am, Miss Fangirl. Oh, fuck, here we go again. Clear your mind completely, Harry. Don't even think about me. And concentrate on the symbol in front of you. See the wand? It's going to move its way around the symbol. At the exact point when the wand passes over the arrows, hit the corresponding arrow key. Oh, well, that's a nice change. Seems parts. like it would be easier. You must hit all of the arrows correctly in order to progress to the next round. Ready to try? Round one, begin. Oh, this is easy as shit. But the symbol was used for the Depulso spell in the third game, and a pink diamond sort of thing was used for Rick Sempra instead. I wonder why they changed that. Well done, Harry. You've advanced to the next round. Five points to Gryffindor. Round two, begin. Now, I'm not even sure how much of a difference there is between Depulso and Rick Sempra. They both act like general attacking spells, although Depulso was also used to knock fiends out of suits of armor as well and to push objects well, away in the third game. The in fact, I just remembered Ten this. The spell Flipendo isn't even in the third game at all. Begin. And that was like the first spell Harry ever learned, too. As for what's in the fourth game and onwards, no idea. Because again, the third game is the only one I ever played before starting the series of... series. Fabulous work, Harry! Aren't you glad you've learned from the likes of me? You've now completed the exercise. Fifteen points to Gryffindor. You've learned Rick to Sempra. You didn't do as well as I did the first time, but then who could? What an now, asshole. Now turn in the spell practice arena. Welcome, Harry Potter, to my famous Rick to Sempra challenge. Famous? To complete the challenge, you must find the completion star, which will be found at the top of this tower. Try to get to it as quickly as you can. If the challenge timer reaches zero before you have the completion star, you lose the challenge. Along the you way, just became you a teacher stars. today. Stars will boost you had to devise so this course lesson the first time, and you had to... How is it famous if you just possible. came up with it? The higher your score is when you complete the challenge, the more house points I will award you. Ready to begin? Good luck! Already Three, it sounds two, like one, the go. average lesson has the potential to be more exciting here than in the first game. Fire crabs and nasty little pests that like to shoot hot flame out of... Uh, well, at you. you can Just say the word asshole. They shoot fire out of their assholes. They're flaming assholes. Just say it. Don't sugarcoat this shit. This indicates that a fire crab placed on or nearby the symbol will cause something to happen in the world, Harry. Try and use Flipendo to push the fire crab onto this plate. At least he's actually teaching me something, unlike in the book or movie, so that's a nice change, I guess. But I suppose it would have been difficult to make gameplay out of not learning anything, so that's alright. It feels like the range that your spells can travel has been increased too, and I'm not too sure if they've even missed a spell yet due to the difficulty in aiming. Or lack thereof in this case, or if I have, it hasn't happened often enough that I can even remember it. You'll recall that this was another extremely annoying problem in the first game, too. Just basic casting accuracy. Although I'm not sure what to do here now. Is there another hole to put this in, or is it just an extra? Maybe if I put it in the same hole? I'm not sure if that accomplishes anything or not. Oh, 
Come on. It won't bounce off the wall either. Fuck this, I'm just wasting time and doing anything with that fire crab was probably optional to begin with. I'm not even gonna bother trying to grab that frog, I don't need it anyways. That's a giant orange snail. Avoid touching them or their slime trails. The acid that they secrete will burn you. Harry, trust me, I know. Rick to Sempra will stun them, and then you can use Flipendo to push them around. Uh, I always thought those snails secreted lava or something. It's something else that's in the first and second games, but not the third one, these snails. Look, I just realized I'm surrounded by four caged fire crabs that can shoot their molten diarrhea at me. Fuck me. Is there a hole in the back of the cages that I can knock them into? It better be. I don't know what else to do about them. On the other hand, maybe I won't even worry about it. Boom! Right in the face. That should keep it off my back long enough. It's like it's a drive-by shooting. Okay, so I can permanently get rid of him. That's nice. Well, at least this time around it shows me how many challenge stars total I need to collect, unlike the last game where you were uncertain how many were in the whole challenge to begin with. Do I really want beans that were being held by a slimy snail? Gnomes are a greedy lot. They will try to steal your Bertie Bot's beans. Yeah, I definitely remember that from the last game. And cause them to drop anything they might have stolen. You could also look at that gnome twerking his ass. Why would you do this? You can't even help it. He thinks he's so goddamn sexy for a walking potato. This is where gnomes come from and where they go to deposit stolen goods. Throw gnomes into these holes to permanently get rid of them. You cannot climb into them. Well, the holes are a neat addition, but I thought hitting them with Flipendo just once was enough to stun them for good. I guess that's not the case anymore. Yeah, well, that went well. That's cool, though. If I throw them close enough to the hole, I can still get rid of them with one final Flipendo spell, and it works out all the same. So look at how slowly the timer's counting down. That's about one per second, so it's counting down in seconds. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour, too, so this is giving me... Uh, well, it's more than half an hour to complete the challenge. It's quite a generous amount of time, actually. In fact, I think it's even a little over 45 minutes. Yeah, it would be. A quarter of... 36 would be 9, and 9 times 3 is 27, so 45 minutes would be equal to 2700 seconds. There's no way you could possibly lose this challenge by running out of time unless you walked away from the computer for a while and forgot to pause it first. Sorry, but what did putting those two snails in the holes accomplish? I figured it would trigger something. Now I gotta do it again here, but now that I'm thinking about it, was there anything that was going to stop me from just running past the snails without stopping? At least these did something, although I doubt the snails needed to be in their pits as half of the solution to bring down these stone steps. There's something visually catchy about how Harry jogs while this theme plays. I guess there's no point in grabbing that frog, and Lockhart has another portrait of himself over there at the end of the room. How many does this guy have? Does he 
does he pay for all these or can you just get a camera to take a picture of you by itself and then reproduce the image indefinitely these pictures don't even move either although i guess that's all right given that this game was made in the early 2000s but still the people in the magical pictures seem to be sentient themselves I wonder how many of them would have seen a muggle picture of a still and lifeless subject frozen forever by time. They might be weirded out by that. Wait, actually, didn't someone, maybe it was Hermione, say something about how still pictures come to life when you submerge them in a magical solution? I forgot about that. The living portraits probably know all about that already. I thought that was going to be a drop-off for a second. Snails and fire crabs are lucky that the spell doesn't crack their shells or anything. Oh my god. How many pictures of himself can a guy stand to display for everyone else? Especially in a setting like this where you're supposed to be teaching your students and want as few distractions from the lesson material as possible. I mean, I know we're talking about Gilderoy Lockhart here, but damn. He's literally using his face as part of this picture-matching puzzle so that there's absolutely no way to avoid seeing him in a smile now. Is he that desperate to impress the students and look like a role model or something? He even uses images of himself with his face turned away from the camera so you can only see the back of his head. I guess he thinks his hair is just that good-looking. What a shithead. See? That's what I was talking about. Who takes a picture of the back of their fucking head like that? It's almost as if you have such low self-esteem that you're embarrassed to show your face, yet for some reason you still want to take a picture anyways. Which of course doesn't make sense since this is Gilderoy we're talking about here, but still, what the fuck is up with that? I've never seen anything like it. I guess the game developers thought it would be a silly joke. And don't get me wrong, it is, I just... I like funny details like that, but for me, it has more of a what-the-fuck sort of quality than a humorous quality. sure how anyone's supposed to grab that bean, but whatever. Either I had to drop down from a different platform up there, or the developers were just continuing to do weird things for shits and giggles. And probably the former of those two options, though. Yeah, it looks like I was just supposed to drop down off the right of the first platform, I guess. some rusty looking metal there. You may recall from the previous series of videos where I played Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, I complained a few times about why there would ever be a squeaky door hinge in a world full of magic where you could presumably cast any spell to fix the problem or at least get some WD-40 from the muggle world. Well, if you're using metal in certain applications such as a staircase like this that descends from the ceiling, why would you let it rust? Surely there's ways to prevent and fix the rusting of metal by using magic, right? There's gotta be. Yeah, that's too easy. Fucking knew it.
certainly seems like I'm picking up a lot of wizarding cards in this lesson. It's generous of Lockhart, I suppose. He's rich, he can afford these. Oh good, we're nearly finished here, and I guess all I have to do is go up this spiral path and knock all four fire crabs into the pit below. Yeah, seems straightforward enough. There's another challenge star here. Shit. Well, I guess in the meantime, I can keep knocking these other fire crabs into the pit before looking for a way to reach that other challenge star. Wait, now there's five fire crabs? Why? back down and figure out how to get this other challenge star. I gotta knock this thing out of the way too. Yeah, there's there were five of them this whole time. Oh fantastic. Do I have to jump all the way down there? Yeah, I guess so. Fucking rude, seriously. Just closing my face. Is it just me, or most of his portraits the variant where he's showing off the back of his head? It's bad enough that he would do that even once, but to do it most of the time, I don't even know what to make of that. That's just, uh, man. I can't get over that, it's just so ridiculous. Okay, nothing back there. Alright, here we go. I'll finally be done with this, I'm getting tired actually. Jeez. Yeah, that's not stressing me out at all. Alright, good. Made it. Finally done here. Well done, Mr. Potter. You have completed my Rick to Sempra challenge. The remaining time now becomes your personal high score. Almost had a full hour left. Oh, I still missed a challenge star. God damn it. <laughs>